Oftentimes, one of the first things people will do as a modification to their bike is they'll add handlebar risers so that when they're standing up, right, the, the bars are up here. I don't have to bend over to reach for my bars. Um, the problem with that is when you're actually uh, in attack position, right, you should be up here. And now the bars are almost too close to my chest. Um, Again, this is awesome for gravel road, just cruising along. Um, but if you're in it, this just feels, to me, too close. And of course, this is all relative to my body proportions, if I have really long arms, short arms, long legs, etc., and my riding style. Um, am I super relaxed just standing up here? Because I really can get super relaxed on this bike um, and stand up here and I don't have to reach down. Uh, but when you're in the dirt and you're in the whoops and you're trying to fight to control your bike, um, it's much better to be down right up here and to this, to me, in my personal opinion, is too close to my chest. I would rather be out here. <laughs> I don't know. I'd rather put the bars out here somewhere. Um, and I've always preferred bars forward. If you ever, ever watched some of the older videos when I, when I had the stock bars on, you'll notice, everybody noticed that I rolled them forward to get them away from me. So when I got the Scott's steering damper um, for the sub mount, so it would go underneath, so it would be out of the way of everything, uh, they automatically give you risers and I'm gonna guess it's probably a good I don't know maybe two inches maybe not quite uh, but I've noticed ever since I put that on there that whenever I'm in the dirt it I just don't feel quite as connected to the bike as I'd like to now standing up again awesome sitting down riding actually feels pretty good but where I care about control is where it feels off. I think I've talked about this where I said match the tires that you put on your bike to the kind of terrain that you need the bike to perform the best in, right? Do you need it to corner so you can lay down and try to scrape your pegs? <laughs> no, I, well, I don't anyways, that's just me. Um, if I'm going off road, when do I want the per the bike to perform its best and in, in my opinion that's when the terrain gets the hardest so I'm going to push my tires to be more oriented towards that type of hard terrain and I think the bike should the, the rest of the setup should should reflect that um, if I need the most control in the dirt then my bike should be set up to work really well in the dirt uh, as long as it's not a huge compromise to its roadworthiness or road comfort, uh, then I'm, that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, so we're going to trade out these bars just so you're, just so you have a comparison. Here are the stock bars, and the stock bars are actually I I, I didn't mind them as all, um, but I crashed on them so often that I wanted something a little more beefy. Uh, here's the rise. Yeah, uh, we're upside down. I'm so sorry. Here's the difference in rise between the lows and the stock. So you see the rise is a little different, but it ends up at about the same place as a stock bar. Maybe a little bit lower. And then the sweep is the biggest difference. Let's see if I can... I'm going to make some of you seasick with flipping this around. The sweep, you can see is much more forward than the stock bars. And I have a feeling they're much, 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 much more forward than the Wyndham bend. So hopefully that'll put the bars right like here-ish, a little more forward and definitely lower.
So we got everything off. We got the new bars on. Now we're going to put the top of the clamps on and there's no real trick to it, but like everything else, don't over torque it. And when I do this, let me get these bars flipped up and over. The really nice bars have these little marks so you can tell where up is and you can either tilt it forward or backwards. Sometimes the clamps, and this one doesn't have it, sometimes the clamps will have a mark here as well. Um, these don't. So basically it's in the middle. So when that is straight up and down or middle to centered or centered in the clamp, that's straight at you. And then you can roll them forward, right, for a positive angle or backwards for a negative angle. Just play around with it. That's all. And then centering it, you see these, whoops. <laughs> oh, it's so hard to do this with one hand. Hang on. Okay. And I want to take notice of the diamonds. On the left, there's one, two, three, four diamonds. On the right, there are four diamonds. So see how the last diamond is right up against the clamp? And this diamond's got some space. So the idea of those diamonds is in order to center your handlebars, you're going to make them look the same on the left and the right. All right, so if I'm like this and I see three diamonds over here and four diamonds in a space on that side, all right, I'm off to the left. So let me get this. There we go. So now we're about centered, all right? We're on the edge of that diamond. We're on the edge of that diamond. I'm going to center these this way, straight up and down, so that the diamond, the line with the diamond is pretty much centered in the clamps. And then, I'm keep it in place so it doesn't move. I'm going to just snug these down, not even snug, I'm just bottoming the bolt out in its little recessed hole. Right? I'm not tightening anything down. I'm just getting it snug enough that my handlebars don't flip all over the place. I'm going to make sure I'm centered. Right? I'm going to make sure I'm centered in the diamonds. I'm at the angle I want to be. And then I'm going to tighten these up back and forth. Da, 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 there we go. Da, da. Okay. Let's see if I can set this down and we'll start going again. So I hope you can see it. There's, there's a certain amount of space here in the clamp. And I'm going to try to maintain that on both sides, that space, as this goes down. You can see i got a, I got a good ways to go before it's actually tight. But as I'm tightening, I'm trying to maintain this space equal front and back. That's all. All right, and as always, I always screw something up. There's actually Loctite on these bolts. It's uh, medium strength. Uh, again, it was already on there, so I didn't add any. So you might want to think about putting a little low strength Loctite on this. It doesn't have to be super high. And then, um, I don't know if anybody's noticed it, but Honda doesn't seem to put Loctite on, on anything. <laughs> in fact, most manufacturers don't because they torque it to the right specs. And I'm going to go look up what these bolts should be and I'll, you know how I do that. And I'll put the specs up there. So these are on. Next thing I'm going to do is get my controls all back together. And as you can see, these Tusk grip heaters, this is the second time this one's broken. So. Uh, as a mini review of Tusk grip heaters, fail. Uh, spend more than 20 bucks on your grip heaters if you want them to last any, any length of time. Just saying. 
For grips, I'm using the Pro Taper Pillow Tops Tri Density MX Grips Anti Vibration Technology. Um, basically, it's just super squishy uh, silicone that dampens some of the vibrations, but mostly they're just really easy to hang on to. Okay, these are not lock on grips, these are glue on grips, so just make note, right? One is bigger in the middle, one is smaller in the middle, right? One goes on your throttle, over your throttle tube, and the other one gets glued on the other side. And for glue, there you go, all-purpose cement, because I have it laying around. As you're putting your throttle tube on, right, when you have it off, look inside, make sure there's no gunk. Um, you can lube it for sure, uh, or you can leave it dry, in my opinion. So you've got a Teflon uh, sleeve on the inside that as long as this outside part of your handlebar is very clean and dry, Right, it should just twist, but we're going to put on there. We're going to give it a couple, and I can't I really can't do this with one hand. <laughs> and then the other part of putting your throttle back on is if you're going to put hand guards on or bark busters or whatever. You need a little bit of space, right? You don't want your tube to come out here. It'll touch the end of your hand guard and it'll get your throttle all sticky. So just keep that loose. Make sure everything inside's clean. Everything on the handlebar is clean. And that's it. All right, next we're gonna set up our controls. Nothing, again, nothing's tightened down. I've got the um, grips about where they need to be. And this is, again, everything on this is personal, whatever feels good. And don't be afraid to, to set it and then decide you don't like it. It's just two bolts. You can mess with it as much as you want. Um, if you're more worried about comfort while you're riding, right, you want your controls a little higher so your arm's in a straight line out to your controls. If you're a little more worried about it while you're standing, if you're going to be standing a lot, right, now my arm, this is more in line with my arm down here. So whatever that looks like for you, that's what you should do. I like mine tilted down. Um, I tend to do this when things get hairy. <laughs> so for me, this is a little more comfortable. So what I'm gonna do is get it about where I think I want it. That actually feels pretty good. I'm gonna just keep it there. And then give the bolts a twist. Right, set the other side, and they don't have to be the same. Again, this is totally up to whatever you think is going to work for you. All right, and then I'm going to show you. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I might change this once I get out on the road or out on the dirt playing around. There we go. Snug everybody up a little bit. Okay, and then let me show you one more thing. So if you see where my, right? So I can't, I can get three fingers on it if I have to, right? So I have it set up so that when I hit it, I'm right here. From, that, from this side, this is what that looks like. That means they're all the way in here, but there's tons of room. And then same thing on the clutch side. I wish I could one finger this clutch, um, but the truth is it's just a little too heavy. But you can see how far over I have the perch sitting. So, right, these, my, these two fingers don't get smushed quite as easily anyways. 
and I'm probably gonna have to readjust all that, right? Um, I know some people like to put Teflon tape underneath these so that if they do take a hit, they fold up, right? They spin instead of breaking your levers off. Um, so far, I've had pretty good luck with these Zeta levers. I'm sure I'm forgetting a thousand things, but that's basically it. Um, so now, the handlebar is where I want it, I believe. Just looking back at from the side. And I'll take a picture. We'll see if we can make, see a difference. And of course, from back here. And then one looking straight down. And then if you're interested, you know, I've made a mess over here. Let me clean it up real quick. Here's the stock bar compared to the Wyndham Bend Evo Taper. Uh, it's about as straight on as I can get it. You can see how much more rise it has. And the sweep on these is, is pretty close to the same. So again, these are, I think, a little more forward, definitely lower with less sweep. Unless you're Graham Jarvis and you like your handlebars way back here. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to get the uh, handguards put on this and uh, we'll go take her for a spin. I can wrap up all my loose wires I got to fix. But, anyways, those are my new handlebars. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for watching, Mo. Momo. Bernie, thanks for watching.